من نعم الله الجبار قبس من نور المختار وبعزم كالنهر الجاري نسلك درب العلم ونعمل من نعم الله الجبار قبس من نور المختار وبعزم كالنهر الحمد لله الحمد لله يا ضعف ما حمده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضى اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأكنة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاه سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم <coughs> First of all we give all praise and all thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us and we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we continue with adab and etiquettes of a believer as Muslims, our character and our behavior in our last session we started the adab of the masjid the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how should we behave in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we did quite a few just to uh, continue from where we left off, we had already reached of entering into the masjid, reciting the dua, performing the two rakat, tahiyatul masjid. Now, <clears throat> one of the adab of the masjid is that we should not eat anything that will leave a scent in our mouth before coming to the masjid. So, for example, eating maybe raw onion or raw garlic. These are things that will have a scent in our mouth and sometimes and when we come to the masjid with our mouth smelling like this and we open our mouth to recite, those next to us are going to feel offended. They are not going to like that type of scent that is coming out of our mouth. And this is why the Prophet wasallam has told us, has restricted us from eating certain things before coming to the masjid. So anything that you know is going to leave a certain scent that is not going to be liked by the other people in the masjid, we should stay away from it before coming to the masjid. We see a lot of people, they like to smoke and that scent remain in their mouth. Now before you come to the masjid, you should not smoke any cigarette. As for the rulings, we're not here to discuss any thick issue if it is allowed or if it's not allowed. But before coming to the masjid, if your entire body is smelling smoke, as soon as you open your mouth, you're smelling smoke, especially for us who we are not involved in that smoking scenario, it is very disrespectful and is very distasteful. So these are things that you should not be involved in just before coming to the masjid. You should ensure that your mouth is not smelling. And this is why it is like to do a lot of miswak. You should use the miswak before you are performing your wudu. Every time you perform your wudu, you do your miswak before coming to the masjid. You do your miswak so that whatever scent could be removed as well. Also, <clears throat> when we come into the masjid, and we are waiting for another salat. We are sitting in a masjid and we are waiting for another salat. We know that this is virtuous to sit and wait for another salat to arrive. But whilst we are waiting, what happens is that sometimes we group, we a few brothers, they are staying back and they end up having worldly discussions in that time. Now the blessings of waiting for one salat to the next salat is only given to an individual if while he's waiting for one to the other, he's involved in ibadat. He's involved in dhikr, he's involved in Quran, he's involved in just maybe reading a book, seeking knowledge. Then he gets the blessings of waiting from one salat to the next salat. So many times you see people wait back from Maghrib until Isha. If they spend Maghrib to Isha in worldly affairs, worldly talking, 
then they do not get that blessings as if they are waiting for the, not, for the other salat. So you need to ensure that you are in ibadat, you are in dhikr of Allah when you are in the masjid, especially whilst you, if you want to gain that reward or that blessings for waiting for the other salat. Also, when you are in the masjid, and if for some reason you hear the adhan, the adhan is called, and you want to leave the masjid for something, which is not allowed for you to leave the masjid without praying the salat. So for example, you enter the masjid, and as long as you hear the adhan, you're not supposed to just leave the masjid to go somewhere else, to go home, or try to pray by yourself and then leave if you heard the adhan. Because the adhan is calling you to prayer, and if you were to leave, to go away, then you're not answering the call of the adhan. However, if someone is leaving this masjid in order to reach another masjid, and he knows that he's going to reach the other masjid on time, then it is allowed if he's going to another masjid. But if he's leaving to go home or going to a business place, and he's hearing the azan and he left, then he's not going to be able, it is not liked in the shari, it is not proper adab, it is not proper etiquette for an individual to do that. Also, <clears throat> and it's mentioned that when you're in the masjid, the lines that you should have in the masjid, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has taught us how we should line up in the masjid. The meals should be in front. The first row should be filled with males who are adults. The second should be children who are not balik. And then the last row should be that of women. Now, many times we see that children, they come with their parents, they come with their father. And the father stand up in the front line <clears throat> and he wants to have his son next to him. Now, if he's doing that, he's going against the way the Prophet ﷺ has taught us of how to have our rules. So the rules are such that the males, adult males, if you have a son, then that son is supposed to be in the second line or the line with the children. That child should not be in the area where the man is supposed to stand up. And one of the hikmah or the wisdom behind the Prophet ﷺ doing that is because we heard of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, whenever there is a space, shaitan takes over that space and shaitan stands in that space. Now a child, sometimes he will be moving. Sometimes he run out of the saf and then he runs in back. Sometimes he's playing, he's distracting the musallis who are praying. Or sometimes he just leaves and shaitan takes over that space and then he comes back and then he leaves again. And for these reasons, they are told to stay in the line that is only filled with children and not adults because they are going to, to disrupt or interrupt the people who are performing Salat. As well as the lines should remain straight. When we are in the masjid and we are going to pray Salat, our, the right adab is ensuring that we maintain a straight line. We should always ensure throughout the Salat that our lines are straight. Also, if someone is praying Salat and you're in a masjid, you're not allowed to walk in front of someone who is praying Salat. And this is something we see a lot. Many people do not know. So because of lack of knowledge, do not know uh, that they are not supposed to pass in front of people, many times they pass in front of people. And we as Musallis as well, if we know that it is a Sunnah Salah that we're going to pray, then we should try to go up in front of the Masjid so that people don't pass in front of us. One of the things that I've seen many times is that sometimes when we are going to perform the Sunnah Salat, we go tilt to the back of the Masjid. Now when you go to the back of the Masjid, sometimes some of them, they, are, they would go so close to the wall that is impossible for someone to pass behind them to go to the door to exit, which is wrong for that individual to do. So if we are performing Salat, nobody is allowed to pass in front of us, 
we should also be considerate in order for the others who want to pass to reach to the exit to come out of the masjid. So we should try our best to pray more in front so that there's always space around that people could pass and they could leave when they're ready to leave. As well as if we want, if there's no place in front, then, and you have, for example, you have a chair, we could put a chair in front as a sutra so that people could pass in front. So these are some of the adab. And for us as Muslim, the day of Jummah is very important. It is a day when you see most of the masjid are filled. There are certain adab of this, that special day of Jummah with regards to coming to the masjid. First of all, it is a command from Allah that we come to the masjid. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu idha nudiya lis salati min yawm al jumaa fas'au ila dhikrillahi wa dhurul bay. O you who believe, whenever the call is made, that is whenever the azan is being called on the day of Jummah, fas'au ila dhikrillah. Allah says, hasten towards the remembrance of Allah وَذَرُوا bay and leave out trading. Leave out trading. Leave out your businesses. Leave out your jobs. No, leave your family. Now it's time for you to go to the masjid because the call is made on the day of Jummah. And so it is a day which, alhamdulillah, we see a lot of people coming to the masjid, fulfilling this. But on that day, we should make ghusl before coming to the masjid, even if we do not need ghusl, it is sunnah to still make ghusl, to wear proper clothing, wear some of our best clothing on this day, perfume, which is ether, put on ether on our body so that we are smelling sweet, and we try to come to the masjid early on that day. The Prophet ﷺ says, it is not right for you to come late and start to part the people in order to reach in front. You should try to reach early in the masjid. And if you are to reach late, then remain at the back. Don't go and try to push this one aside and that one aside for you to get a certain spot. If you came late, then you stay to the back. If you, but it is better for you to try your best to reach there early. Because there's even special blessings on the day of Jummah for when you reach early in the masjid. There's one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari. He says, وَقَفَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ عَلَىٰ بَابِ الْمَسْجِرِ That the angels, they stand up by the door of the masjid on the day of Jummah. Allah sends the angels down and they stand by the door of the masjid. يَكْتُبُونَ الْأَوَّلْ فَالْأَوَّلْ And they start to write down those who are coming to the masjid. So when you go for the masjid on the day of Jummah, the angels are there writing down who is coming first and who is coming second and who is coming third on the day of Jummah. And he says, Al-Muhajir, which means Al-Mubakir, the individual who is the first, the, the one that reaches there the earliest, the first person to reach there, the angels write for him that he's going to get the reward as if he had sacrificed a camel for the sake of Allah. He'll be getting the blessings as if he did qurbani of a camel for the sake of Allah. And then the second person that comes, they are going to get the blessings as if they have sacrificed a cow in qurbani for the sake of Allah. The third person that comes, he's going to get the blessing of a kabash, of a sheep or a ram for the sake of Allah. The next person is going to get the, as if he has sacrificed a chicken for the sake of Allah. And everyone that comes after that, he's going to get the blessings as if he has given an egg to someone in need. <clears throat> and he's going to get the blessings as if he has given that as sadaqah to someone in need. Uh, that, that is the amount of an egg that he has, give away, he has given away in sadaqah. And when the khatib comes and he stands on the member, the angels, they will close their books and they are going to sit and listen to the khutbah. They are going to sit and listen to the khutbah. And this is why as long as the khutbah starts, we should not go and pray two rakat salat as we mentioned in our last session. We should sit and listen because the angels sit and listen to the khutbah. 
they do not write anymore. They close their book and they are ready to listen to the khutbah. So if the angels could listen to the khutbah, then we as believers, we should also sit there attentively listening to the khutbah and be quiet and not talk. Not even trying to stop somebody from talking. We should remain quiet and listen attentively to the khutbah. And we have a lot of people, they, they brace up on the wall and they sleep. We should try our best to pay attention during the khutbah. And the last that I will mention is that when you leave the masjid, you leave with your left foot. And when you leave with your left foot, you recite the dua, which is Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik. Wallah, we ask you for your favors. So we, when you exit the masjid, you recite the dua. And these are some of the adabs of the masjid. May Allah help us all to fulfill these adabs. And may Allah grant us all Jannah and grant us the love for the masjid that we could also be frequently going to the masjid. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Min ni'amillahi al-jabbari qabasun min nuri al-mukhtari wa bi'azmin kan nahri al-jari nasluk darb al-ilm wa na'mal Min ni'amillahi al-jabbari qabasun min nuri al-mukhtari wa bi'azmin kan nahri al-jari nasluk darb al-ilm wa na'mal Qabasun islahun wa ikhara